Hi everyone, welcome back to another new tutorial. It's a little late this week because I was just so busy with a lot of stuff going on um, at the moment, but nonetheless, I am here with a tutorial. Now, Mother's Day is tomorrow, so I thought, why not um, paint some nice flowers? Um, a nice dark background with some nice flowers, like a pink rose and then a pink kind of... Um, I forget what the name of it is. I think it's just kind of a sun, some kind of a sunflower or something like that. So bright pink against a dark black background. What do you think? I'm going to paint that for you today. Just to try something new and fresh and colourful. And just to get your brush flowing nicely around the canvas, nice and loose. Um, no, you know, not too much detail, just a little, but not too much. Uh, I just thought it would be nice for Mother's Day. Um, pay tribute to all you hard-working mothers out there um, and my wife especially okay I thought she might like this so that's what we're going to do today um, I'm currently working on a tutorial for my frames a kind of an in-depth tutorial with my framing so I'm working on that at the moment and I'm going to frame a big painting my my book scene with the light with the oil candle with the oil light with the book um, I'm working on a frame for that at the moment, so I'm going to do a tutorial on that. Um, so, yes, uh, lots to come, lots of things to come. So, here we are, my blank canvas. Um, I was going to put a wash of black on this, because most of the back, all the background, in fact, is just black. But I don't want to lose the vibrancy of the pinks, the reds and pinks. So, I'm going to leave it white and just paint around the flowers, then with a loose wash, we'll say, a couple of loose washes. So, that's the plan. All right, um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe because you're missing so much painting, uh, so many different types of techniques and a bit of a laugh and a bit of a joke along the way as well, as I'm sure you know. So um, don't go anywhere, I'm going to have a bit of fun with this, get your palettes and you can follow me along with this one, I'm going to try and simplify it for you so you can follow me along and um, you can always add your little bits to it then later on. So let's have a go off this and see what it turns out like, I hope it's going to be nice. But the photograph I picked is one that I photographed myself um, with some flowers that I had bought for my wife um, last week. Or I think it was two weeks ago, actually. I bought some flowers and I photographed these beautiful flowers together um, against the black background. So let's have a look and see what we can do with this. Don't go anywhere. Okay, here we go. Um, right, I have a 16 by 12 canvas. 16 high by 12. And I primed this once okay um just with a regular water-based primer then i give it a rub of sandpaper just a very light rub all over with sandpaper okay so there's the photograph now isn't that just gorgeous what do you think wouldn't this be nice with a nice dark background wouldn't it be lovely so i'm just going to get a pencil and i'm going to just very quickly now i have a reference photograph here you can probably see that on the side you should see it up there in your corner as well <clears throat> now most importantly we have a cup of coffee okay that's the most important thing in any painting you need to have a cup of coffee or tea next to you okay i'm just going to very lightly sketch the outline of this beautiful big flower here okay um i don't want to overfill the canvas with this but this is very prominent in the canvas isn't it and the center of that flower seems to be slightly down further in the middle from from the middle rather so slightly down from the middle so we have the flower then is sort of foreshortened does that make sense in fact what i'm going to do is to add to the effect of it facing us i kind of tilted slightly i'm going to make it slightly oblong it's going to go slightly wider on the sides okay now we can adjust this as we're going. This is only a very loose, um, a very loose sketch. So we have this in the center, this lovely big center, and we have another one in the middle here, and another little bit around there. It's just a very, very loose impression. The rows, I will try and simplify the rows for you. Okay, um, you know I could spend, I could spend three hours painting this rose if I really wanted to. Take my time. Um, but I'm just going to do it very, very loosely just for you at home, okay? Um, it comes down like that and then it turns like that. The most important part really is getting the front petal 
just right here okay that's probably the most important part of painting a rose the front few petals because they tell you it's a rose do you understand Does that makes sense um, so let's just go like that and go around like that and it disappears so you can see now I'm just gonna be very very loose with all of this another piece there um, comes around okay comes down like that so you can begin to see it just take shape very very loosely and I'm gonna go just very quickly up around like this okay just to suggest the curvature of the top of the rose there okay and it's basically a case of each one is kind of over overlapping the other does that make sense and we can just do it very quickly like that that's all i need to do now really to be quite honest i just want to keep this nice and simple all right a little bit there just to suggest a kind of a twisted petal or something down there we can leave these buds until last right let's crack on i want to crack on and have a bit of fun with this um so i just want to make sure that everything is recording i have a camcorder and i have a phone just as a backup and i want to make sure everything is recording just right because i took a recording this morning with my phone and i went to look back on it it didn't work it just it just would not work so i'm recording with two devices today my camcorder and my phone because i want to try different things right so i'm going to start oh yes i will tell you my colors what we have lovely rich vibrant colors today i have titanium white naples yellow cadmium yellow a little magenta because that big flower here there's lots of magenta in that alizarin crimson some cadmium red just to warm areas some cobalt blue phthalo blue I have a little burnt cyanide um, and I have a little black okay that's all we need I have some turpentine with a little linseed oil mixed this is my mixture I just made I just made a new batch this morning okay it's about this much linseed oil and the rest in turpentine okay give it a good shake and that's my medium then that's perfect for everything I need so let's have a bit of fun let's crack on I'm going to take my large stubby okay I'm going to fill that in today and I have I also have a new brush which I um, which I got years ago I never used them I picked them up a couple of years ago Dyla Roni system 3 but they're filberts okay um, I think filberts would be fantastic for these petals because they already have that shape of the petal wouldn't that be lovely so we can try them and see how we get on let's dampen our brushes i'm going to dampen my large brush and i basically want to cover the back of this now with a nice rich dark black okay simple a simple black and i'm taking tiny tiny amounts of turpentine okay i don't want this too wet um now the thing about this is putting black on a white canvas is it could look a little bit cold because of the white showing through so what I might do is just add maybe a hint of crimson into this. And I think that slight pinky kind of a tone in the black will warm the background slightly. You could put a little burnt umber in there as well. Um, maybe I should have. But I'm going to go along first. And let me just fix something here now which is making an awful racket underneath. There, that's better. Um... I'm just going to go along with this and keep adding little bits of turpentine as you need okay I'll just go around the flower very loosely like this and bear in mind now this is a very thin coat I can go over all this again so I'm building up thin layers of paint that's my that's my goal okay nice thin layers of paint I'm not going to go into my flowers okay um i know a lot of people will say well why don't you just give the entire canvas a wash of black but then it'd be very difficult to get this rich reds and pinks so i wouldn't give the canvas a really dark wash all over because that white will really make those flowers pop understand you can try it if you like but you will find it very difficult to get those bright bright colors afterwards just bear that in mind okay 
I've tried it a lot of times, believe me, and it just did not work out. It was just so much hard work trying to get that bright flower colour to come out on the dark background. So I said in future I'll just go around the flower, um, particularly if you have bright flowers. Now that seems a bit cold to me so I'm going to kind of warm this a little bit, just slightly if I can. I'll try some cadmium red, okay? And again, this cadmium red now you see is going to bounce off of the flowers and it's going to tie everything nicely together. So pick up some red, go right into your black look and that will disappear into your black very quickly but you will see a nice soft kind of a warm glow here and there. Now I just need to get some more black because I went through that black very quickly didn't I? That went nowhere, absolutely nowhere. So let's get some more. Normally black is a very rich and overpowering colour but for a background um, it does take quite a bit to cover. So I'm just adding a little bit of turpentine if I feel that the canvas is slightly kind of too dry or the paint is not moving around enough for me. I'm just picking up tiny amounts of turpentine with the corner of my brush. Tiny, tiny, tiny amounts, okay? I'm hardly even touching the turpentine with this brush as I go along. First of all, anyway, I'm just concentrating on getting all of this covered in. Get this slightly round, maybe just a little bit more round. Okay. Again, a little bit of turpentine, some more black, just to thin it slightly. You can put a different kind of a background into this if you like. You can use whatever colour you like. A brown, uh, you could even use a dark green perhaps, that would complement the colours nicely. But I just, I put this dark um, kind of a fabric behind and it tucked it under the flowers and I um, it just worked so nicely. Now I did kind of <clears throat> add some darkness to it with my camera as well uh, but I think it worked out quite nice. So now we have our dark background let's go and get some cadmium red and let's pop some cadmium red in down here. Let's get some cadmium red with even some crimson pop that in over here So you can see now it's really getting nice and rich isn't it this will really look very nice later on i have some nice red buds here as well so i'm going to put plenty of red in just around here okay a little crimson even just on its own i know you probably can't see this crimson um on its own on the canvas but it does give a nice kind of a warm glow here and there you will see in the end, when I show you this finished, you will see that nice warm glow come to life. Okay, let's just soften it through here and there. Look, no, it's, it's not everywhere, I'm just kind of brushing it along here and there. <clears throat> okay, excuse me, I need to get some more crimson on my palette. And I need some more cadmium red as well. Alright, let me see cadmium red. And we'll start with the rose, I suppose. The rose now does look a little smaller in the photograph. So what I might do is, just to make it more in proportion with the photograph, I might just go around the rose just a little bit, make it slightly smaller, okay? And then just soften that colour out into the background, just very randomly. I think that's a little bit uh, more in keeping. With the photograph now there we go it's just a little smaller that's all right let's put this down <clears throat> that's our big brush finished we don't need that anymore next a sup of coffee ah yes a lovely sup of coffee and i'm going to go with a flat brush first <clears throat> for the rose i'm going to try a couple um a few different sizes let me see what we have. I'll use this one for filling in perhaps. Um, I have a medium stubby as well, but this is kind of still a bit soft for me for what I want. So yeah, let's try a couple of um let's try a couple of different flats, okay? Let's try, let's try a few of them. I suppose I can go with this one for now. 
I'm going to make up a very rich pink. All right. Now let's have a bit of fun with this and see what kind of pinks we can come up with. Um, everything is still recording, I presume. Yes, all recording fine. I hope. My nerves are at me because of these camcorders stopping and not recording properly and so on. Let's take some crimson. Lots of crimson. I'm going to make a nice puddle of colour here now for this. The rose is slightly warmer than the big flower here. Um, I don't know what it's called. Is it a sunflower? I don't know. Um, but it's nice. I'm going to go with some... Now, crimson and white does make a pink, but it's a warm pink, okay? This is slightly cooler. So I'm going to take a little bit of magenta. Let's just try. And the magenta has that sort of purpley colour. Pinky purple. That will cool the crimson ever so slightly. And let's make lots of this paint now, okay? Um, I don't want to go on with a very thick layer. You see, I'm thinning it out now with a bit of turpentine. Um, but I do want a nice rich colour. So I may go for some of the, slight, the slightly darker colours first. And then work my way out to the lights. Let me just have a look at this now. Okay, now that's not bad. It needs to be a little warmer. More crimson, more magenta. And let's even try a hint of cobalt blue, okay? Just a hint, look. That will sort of darken this ever so slightly. Okay, let's go and fill in our edges. Now don't worry if you're picking up. You see the way it's picking up some of the black? That's brilliant. That's what I want. I love that. Because that ties everything together, okay? That helps the kind of flowers to sort of merge into the background. So that's exactly what I want. More crimson, more magenta. I'm going to darken them slightly. And I come over here. We have this piece that sort of comes up and back. Okay. Um, the thing to bear in mind is, this is a nice bright pink here, okay? So we want something dark behind it to show off the petals. So we need to add some darkness to this later. Okay? So just bear that in mind. Um, I'm kind of having to sort of think ahead slightly. A few steps ahead. Let's take more magenta. And let's go over here. Let's just... Now, what I'm doing is, okay, I'm not looking at details. I'm just looking at filling the, all of this in with one colour, okay? That's what I'm doing. Now, it's a thick colour, but it's not very thick. It's not just paint. There's little thinners in this. So, I can still see the canvas through it slightly, all right? And I'm basically concentrating on filling in the outline of this flower. So now look, we have the outline filled in. A little bit here. Then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start putting in the darks. So I always start off with a kind of a medium base colour. Then I put in my darks and my lights. Does that make sense? That's what, that's how I like to kind of work. So, now, it may be completely different to what most of you might do, um, but I find it works very, very well. So, I'm going to take some more paint now, just some of that magenta, because the magenta is a beautiful colour, and it seems to be almost just, must just magenta on its own in some places. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to thin this, okay? From here on, I'm going to use just paint on its own. All right? So let me just start off now with this down here and I'm going to pick out the shades, some of the shaded areas, okay? Uh, we have a bit of a shade there and what happens is the shaded areas almost kind of soften into the lighter areas. So that's shaded area there. Let's take some magenta with just crimson on its own. And one thing about magenta is it's a very underpowering colour. Um, it takes a lot of magenta to really get the colour on. So just bear that in mind, okay? Now I'm going to darken it around here. We have another dark bit that comes down inside here, okay? Comes around. Um, so I'm just looking at the darker areas and the shapes of those darks, okay? Um, okay, I'm going to go... I'm going to go across here. I'm going to define just the front of the petal there. Soften that down. 
So you're going to begin to see how now how this works. I'm taking some magenta with some black, okay? It's a very dark colour. Now it's not too dark, I'm not going completely dark right away, alright? This is just I'm softening some of these darks into some of the petals. I'm just picking out some areas. There's a nice dark inside there. And then you see I can refine the petals with my lights later on. I can refine the outlines and all that kind of thing. It's going to be lovely. You'll enjoy this, I hope. Um, so we have a nice, this is a nice dark here because it's in shadow, right? So I'm going to continue that around just like that. Okay. I'm going to take some black. I'm going to go with some black and crimson, actually. I'm going to go in here. And soften that colour. So this is inside the turn of the rose at the base here. I'm going to soften that down. And then I'm going to soften it outwards, okay? There we are. Isn't that lovely? Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking some cadmium red. I'm going to take some cadmium red with a little crimson. Okay? Um, because there's a slightly warmer colour coming into it here and there. And this now, you see, will soften into that crimson, that lovely crimson. And it will just kind of brighten it up slightly, ever so slightly. Crimson with red. Um, I'm going to soften it in here as well, just to warm it slightly. I'm going to actually use the flat of my brush to turn the petal down, look. To turn my brush stroke down. You see? Doesn't that look lovely? And let's go up here. We have another one which turns. Like that. Okay. And now you may use, need, need to use a slightly flatter brush than this. Um, this is not bad. But you could use a slightly flatter brush if you wanted. Um, I'm going to use this now just to turn the front petal here. And then it gets lighter, so I'll stop it there. I'm not painting where the lights are going to go. A um, little bit in here. Like that. I know you're probably thinking, look, this is going to take forever. But you'll see, it'll come, it'll come together now very, very quickly. And you can kind of learn to make it your own as well. Okay. Now, I'm going to put this brush down for a moment. <clears throat> Let me just make sure all the cameras are still recording because I'm terrified. I really am. I'm terrified in case this doesn't come out properly. Let me get a small round brush. Okay. I'm going to go with my small little detail brush. This is not very, very pointy, but it has a nice bit of a point to it. And I'm going to start putting in some of the darks, okay? So what I'm going to do for the darks is I'm going to take some cyan, some crimson, um, a little cadmium red, and some black, okay? Now plenty of crimson in this. So it's a brownie blacky kind of a red. You can just use black and crimson if you like. If you don't want to kind of make things too complicated like this, black and crimson will do fine. So let's just go in here. Okay. Okay, that's probably a bit brown. Let's go with a little bit more black. And bring that down. I'm going to now start pulling in some of the darks, you see. <clears throat> then I'm going to soften them out. I'll then use my soft kind of blender brush in a moment to kind of soften these darks outwards. Uh, we have another nice one over here. And that goes around and goes up by that petal there. Okay. Now I'm going to take a soft brush. Um, let me see if I can find a nice soft one but a small one at the same time. This is the only one I have. So let me just soften 
some of these. Okay, just like that. Now, I'm going to go, um, let me see, right, I'm going to go up here. There's a nice dark spot up in here, isn't there? So I'm going to just do the outline of that petal and then soften this down like so, very gently. And this, this can be a little tricky, but just try and take your time when you're doing it. Okay, it goes up and around, and I'm going to soften it up to that petal up there, okay? And this now is still not even the darkest, okay? It's going to get a lot darker than this. Let nice little dark up there, it softens down onto that one. Alright, there we go. Get some more dark and um, we go over here. It's a work in progress, that's what I'll say. It takes a bit of time to do all of this. So we have this dark here now from another petal. And it's going to soften outwards. Okay, you can even use your finger, look, just to soften it in. And then we have another one which comes across here. So what I'm doing, you see, is I'm using the dark colours to suggest the edges of the petals. Does that make sense? That's showing you then the light side of the petals behind. Okay, so we have that one there. We have another nice one in here. Okay, that one comes along and softens in there like that. Now soften that upwards. Uh, we have another one over here. This one kind of comes down. You could probably add more red to this, uh, a bit more pink even. We'll start making this more, more of a red. Let's take some crimson with cadmium red and let's start adding that warmer colour. No, nice dark in here. There we go. It takes a little bit of work, doesn't it? You know, um, you don't get them perfect the first time. I very rarely get flowers perfect the first time. I find myself having to go over and over and over. Um, but it's fun doing it, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a lot of fun trying to get them to look like flowers. So let's go up here now and add a little bit of dark colour. I have some hailstone coming down outside, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but we have a lot of hailstone here. It's freezing cold outside here in Cork at the moment. Okay, let me just sit back now and take a look at this. It's beginning to take shape, ever so slightly. Now let's start adding I want to add some warm colour to some of the flower in the dark areas. Just a little bit of warmth. And I'm going to take a real small detail brush now for this next part. Okay, a very small pointy brush. And I'm going to take some nice dark colour. Um, I'll go with some crimson and black, I think. Maybe a hint of magenta. And a bit of turpentine in this, just so it's nice and flowy. And let's just maybe add some 
fine little details so let's go up like that pick out just the edge of that petal just there there's a little bit of a dark line under some of them isn't there um, let's go up and like that Uh, let's go around some of these ones here. In a way now, so we have that there. We have another dark one in there. We have a nice, very dark line down inside there. It's quite dark in here, actually, down inside in this side. Okay, there we go. Now you can do as much or as little to this as you like, okay? Um, don't feel like you have to make it absolutely perfect, you know what I mean? I'm not going to make this absolutely perfect. This is just a nice general idea of two flowers, okay? I don't want to um, make them absolutely perfect. I just want to suggest some petals. That's all. I don't want to go over the top with all of this. Uh, put, a, put a few over here. Okay. I'll go up then. And so just tick one kind of bent over here, twisted. Okay, so I think next I might start adding a few small little highlights. And uh, Now I'm not going to overdo this with the highlights, okay? I'm just going to take a small flat brush, I'll take a little magenta and a little white I might try that maybe a hint of crimson um, because even though they're highlights they're still quite warm for highlights on a flower so a little crimson white a tiny bit of magenta and let's now just pick out some highlights here and there I'm going to soften them down And I don't want to overdo these now because I can go back over later and do more if I wish. So there's no point in just going crazy. Um, a couple of them here. Uh, I'll put one or two here. And it's really coming down outside now, that rain is really heavy. Oh, I tell you something. Um, I'm going to put a few around here, just to catch the light. Because the light is sort of coming from this angle. So I just want to catch that light slightly, sort of on one side only. Um, this one is quite bright here. Soften that back in, then look, you see. And I put one or two maybe here. And I'm almost forming the shape of the petals with this. See the way I'm giving it a slight little curve. So I'm almost kind of forming the shape of the petals as I go. Does that make sense so i'm using the light color to form the shape of those petals and i might just put one or two around up here as well just to sort of separate them a little okay now i'll leave it at that i want to move on and do the big one below we can kind of add details later on if we wish so let me just sit back now always sit back and take a good look at what you're painting just to see how it looks 
Okay? That's a good idea. I would always say that. <sighs> Sit back every couple of minutes and take a sip of coffee. So this next one, I'm basically now going to do the very same, um, same principle I suppose. I'm just going to fill the colour in first with a nice pink. I'm going to take a nice medium flat brush and I get some magenta. Now there's a lot of magenta in this flower. Magenta with a little white and you can see how overpowering the white is with the magenta. So magenta is a very understated colour, okay? Maybe a little bit of red, cadmium red. And I have a nice, there, look that's a nice colour now isn't it? Doesn't that suit that colour just lovely though? It suits that flower lovely. I won't go right to the edge. And you can see it's quite thin. I'm just going on nice and thin. And let's just fill this in all the way around. Just fill all this in. So you can see now the white of the canvas is really making this nice and vibrant, isn't it? Okay, that's fine. And we can maybe just make it slightly darker on one side. Let's take a little crimson and some magenta and make it slightly darker here, okay? And what I'm going to do is, with my pencil, I'm just going to suggest the circle down here, just so I don't lose it, okay? I don't want to lose that circle, so what I'm going to do then is, I can take my darker colour, my magenta, my crimson, and I can follow that then, you see? It's just to have it as a reference, do you know what I mean? It's a good, good reference point. And, okay, let's have a look now and see where should we start. I think I should give the old Filbert brush a go, shall we? I have two sizes. Um, I think I'll start with... I might start with the smaller one, perhaps. Let's go with the smaller one. And I'm going to mix up a load of colour for this now. I'll take all the magenta that I have. And I'm going to put more on my palette. And I will lighten some of those now with this colour as well. So what I'll do is, um, what they say, what's known as tinting. So what, what, they, what I mean by tinting is taking a little bit of this colour and putting it on that flower and taking a little bit of that colour and putting it on this flower. So you're complementing both flowers with the colours. Does that make sense? So now I'm going to start with Magenta and white, I think that's a nice all round colour because that's basically the colour I think the flower is. So mix plenty of this now, don't be shy, look, put plenty of it in there. And I'm not going for the lightest tone, I'm going for maybe the middle tone because I want to add highlights with my brush to this while it's wet. Let me have a look at this now. And what I'm thinking is the outside flowers, you know the petals that are hidden behind. I'm kind of painting those ones first, okay? So, they're not um, the main petals that you're going to see. They're kind of just poking out here and there in the background. I'm probably putting too many in, but it's okay. Most of this will be covered again anyway, all right? So not to worry. Let's get some more. Let's try crimson this time with a little magenta and some white. And let me just put in these big ones here. Now these are going to be foreshortened slightly.
Okay. They're quite big petals, aren't they? Now don't worry about all of this hair. This is going to be covered again, okay? I'm just softening this back in here. All right, let's cut some crimson and some white. And again, some magenta. So you can see now how the magenta, it doesn't go very far, does it? It's, um, it's not a very strong colour, but it's just enough, I think. Because I don't want it to be too overpowering either. I don't want magenta to be overtaking everything on the palette. So it's a lovely colour for that reason. Um, it's very forgiving. That's the kind of colour I'm looking for. A very forgiving colour. And let's just go along. So we have kind of the background petals done, okay? Look very loosely, and I might even lighten some of those at the back again a little bit more. So I'll take some magenta and plenty of white, okay? And I'm going to just go right in, and I'm going to put some real bright colours in some of them, look. And perhaps on some of the tips of these ones. But not too much. Okay. Let's stop it at that now for a moment. And I'm going to just add a tiny, tiny bit of detail to some of those in that background, okay? I'm going to take some magenta with crimson and a little, maybe a little phthalo blue, okay? I'm not going to use black. I just want to give some of these little bits of shadow just here and there, okay? Just little, little tiny amounts. Perhaps one or two up there. You can just have a bit of fun with this. Just make it your own. All right. Okay. Now, another thing you can do is add some lighter shades. Let's take some Naples yellow. With some magenta and some white. And just add the tiniest hint of a light flicking across some of those petals. Uh, let's go one or two down here. I won't overdo this, okay? Now, let me just sit back again and take another look. All right, that's not bad. I'm gonna just soften some of those down into the flower. And the next thing I'm going to do is, I think I'll get my bigger brush and start pulling in some darker ones on this side. All right, so I'm gonna take lots of magenta and a hint, maybe a hint of cadmium red with the magenta for a change and try that. And let's go and put in some flowers, nice little petals. So now I'm making the petals a lot more pronounced. Does that make sense? All right in there to your magenta, lovely pinky color. See that? So they're much darker now and they have a bit more form as well. Okay. 
Okay, let's come down here. Um, you could actually start from the outside and work in. These ones are foreshortened, so they only have a little bit showing, you see? Just tiniest little bit. I'm going to take some cobalt now and add a tiny bit of cobalt blue with the magenta, just to make it a little more purpley. Tiny bit of cobalt. Because it is, after all, darker in this side here, isn't it? And then I'm going to give that a wipe and just go into some white and lighten that with some white and put some lighter colours. On that side. Okay. And what I'm going to do then is take some white with some magenta and a hint of cobalt blue. Nice bright mauve. And I'm going to just hit some of those with that colour, okay? Uh, let me get some more blue in this now, actually. The blue's quite nice. Complements them nicely. I'm just going to hit some of the tips of those with some of that colour. And this is all about just having a bit of fun. Okay? Don't be shy. Don't be afraid to have a bit of fun with this. I'm going to take my small pointy detail brush and I'm going to make a nice dark colour. Let's get some black, lots of turpentine and some crimson. And I'm going to just give some of these a little bit of detail. A little bit of shadow behind some of them. And just kind of maybe define some of the tips of some of them. And it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy painting like this. I know I'm kind of making it free. I'm not, you know, I'm not um, trying to copy them all exactly. I'm just being nice and loose. I may even go with a palette knife and um, do some nice work with the palette knife as well. That would be quite fun, wouldn't it? But I think just to keep it nice and simple, uh, because it is Mother's Day tomorrow, I just wanted to kind of do something nice. Um, it's my first year without my mum this year for Mother's Day, so I just felt I wanted to do something nice and cheerful. You know, just something nice and bright. Uh, splash of colour, as they say. Isn't that, isn't that right? A little splash of colour. I'm just going to go down and just put in the centre quickly and we can kind of work away on highlights and things then afterwards. So I'm going to start with... I have a nice orangey kind of a colour down there. I'm going to get some red with lots of yellow. I think I'll start with this. There's a nice rich colour down there, isn't there? Beautiful altogether. Absolutely beautiful colour. Goes right around. Let's just make it nice and bright. Then I'm going to add a nice dark centre to this. Get some... Um, Black with cyan and a little cadmium red. Okay. 
In fact, I might even put a lot of crimson in the centre of that. Then we have a nice, rich pink. Again, I'm going to get some of my mauve, my magenta colour. I'm going to take some of that and a little hint of white. And I'm going to dab that colour with my brush. Look, dab it around. And that's another lovely technique for the centre of flowers, you see. Just a little colour on the tip of your brush and dab. Now wonderful. And we can take a little crimson or even cadmium red. Add a little of that around the centre. Just a touch. Going right in, so it's all sort of merging together, isn't it? And I'm going to darken one side of this. I'm going to take some cadmium red, some cadmium yellow, and I'm going to just darken slightly. Let's take some magenta as well, actually. I'm going to darken some of that in here. I'm going to take a little hint of black on the tip of my brush and I'm going to just sort of let that colour just dart around very lightly around the edge. I'm going to take some black on its own, put that in the centre. Okay, I'm then going to get some rich yellow. And I'm going to add some rich yellow here and there. Doesn't that give a lovely effect? That just on the tip of the brush gives a wonderful effect. A very rough kind of effect. I put some Naples yellow up on this side because the light will catch one side slightly more. I'll take another little bit. Okay, we have a little spot of that colour in the centre, like that, and I'm going to mix, just take some magenta on its own and put some of that around here as well, some of that lovely magenta. And I'm going to take then a very small pointy brush. I'm going to take a tiny bit of white on the end of my brush. And I'm going to just put little tiny, little tiny, tiny flicks just here and there, look. And in here, you can hardly see them at all, but I'll still put a few in. Isn't that lovely? And I'm picking up all the different colours as I go, you see? It's just nice and loose, nice and free. Then take a little bit of white, perhaps put a couple of dots of white in here. You see, just suggesting that there's something there, something going on. That's all. That's all you're trying to do, really. Let's just sit back and take a look at this and see how this looks. Oh, that's not too bad, is it? It's not too bad at all. Um, I might start strengthening some of my petals. Um, I might even, actually, let me see, you know, try to define some of the ones at the front here. Um, I'll take some magenta with a little white and I might just try and suggest some of the fronts of the petals here 
with that. Okay, just a little. Um, I might introduce some of that colour in up there as well, look. To my rose. Uh, add a bit of that colour here. Just to complement the painting and tie everything together. Maybe add a little bit of that around the top here. A little bit around here and there. So I'm just tinting some of the rows, you see? So I'm just kind of tying them together. Now I'm going to deepen some of the pink on the flower. I think I'll get some crimson for this. And <sighs> I'll take some crimson, I think even just crimson on its own might be enough. I'm going to just sort of warm just some of these here as it comes around, okay? Just to suggest the darkness of one side of the flower. Um, I might go a little darker even with some of one of these. Maybe a little bit some of the other ones. And look, I know this is all very loose and all that kind of thing. But you can add to this yourself, alright? You can always add to this. Now, I'm going to take some yellow on the tip of my brush. And just pop some sprinkles of yellow here and there. And I'm going to take some nice bright colour, so this bright pink. And I'm going to just highlight some of my petals. With that. I won't do them all, just one or two here and there, okay? Just to suggest that the light is catching these. I do one or two down here. And of course, look, you could probably add all your own little bits and bobs into this as you like. Um, but I'm just kind of simplifying the whole process, really. That's all. Do you understand? I'm just simplifying everything. Now, let me get some dark. Just add a few bits of darks here and there. Let's go up and do these lovely petals. We have some beautiful pink are these beautiful green petals up here on the left. I think, are these little buds? I think they're going to be beautiful. So I'm going to try and do some of those. Let's just take our small filbert, or a small, even a small flat will do just fine as well. And let's make a nice rich green. Let's go with little black and lots of yellow, okay? That'll give us a nice warm green. And I'm hoping now my background is almost dry. A hint of blue there, look, as well, okay? Um, so let's go here, okay? And another one here. Let's take a hint of blue in that. And we have a little petal coming out there. And one sort of flicking out there. Okay, then take my small brush, small round brush, I'm going to darken the backs of those slightly. I'm 
and then I'm going to just lighten with a splash of that yellowy colour the front side okay then I'm going to just take some red some nice rich cadmium red and I'm going to put that up there And what I'm going to do then is soften that red down into the green, look. Pulling them together. You see? Now let's put a hint of a light colour just on one of those, even two of them actually, just to suggest the light catching them. And we can do the same with the petals here. And then let's just take a nice rich green and let's just pull them down. Little stems on these, like so. And I'm going to suggest a little bit of greenery at the bottom here, soften it out. And my friends, how's that? I mean, it's not that bad, is it, for a small tutorial? Soften that little green in the background there, down there, just to suggest there's some greenery hidden down below. And you see, I'll then kind of concentrate, I, I, I might go around then and just add little small details to the flowers, little, even up in the roses. Look, I might go in and darken some of those. Alright. And... Just kind of pick out areas you think need to be a little stronger. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, just a loose. As I keep saying, a loose representation, that's all. The main thing is that you have a bit of fun when you're doing this, okay? You have to make this fun. Because if it's not fun, there's no point, is there? No point at all. And then get some of the lighter colour and maybe go up and add a splash of that here and there. And my friends, I think I'll leave it at that. I'll tip away now and I might just refine some of the flowers here and there. Um, not the flowers, rather, the petals. Um, you know, I'll tip away and I'll just add little subtle colours to them here and there. Just to make them stand out that bit more. But in general, this is just a nice simple tutorial of some nice flowers. And I'm going to just lighten some of them again around the front here. Again, just brighten them again, just slightly. Okay. And I think I will leave it at that. I don't want to overdo it. Um, I'm happy enough with that. It's a nice little, nice little flower tutorial about keeping it loose. Let's put a frame on this and see what it looks like, yeah? No. And that's quite nice now, isn't it? Nice little painting. I'm very, very happy with that. I will, again, now, you see, you can fiddle too much, but I will just add a couple of little lights around here and there. And you can tip away with this, do your own little things um, as you please. So that's it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed that. Nice little simple tutorial for you. 
Let's see if we zoom in on this. There we go. So, I say to you all, let me see if I can move this around. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. I hope you have a fabulous day. Um, thank you so much for watching. I, I'll do that next week with a nice landscape again, okay? But in the meantime, try that. Just lash a bit of color onto a piece of canvas. Have a lot of fun with it. Keep it simple. Um, you can go into a lot more detail if you like, but just keep it simple. I'll be back very soon. Um, thank you so much. Do subscribe, as I said. You're missing loads of fun tutorials. And um, thank you all for your support. Okay, I really mean that. You can pop over to Patreon if you want to support me that way. There are lots of extra tutorials over there for you to try. So um, please have a look and see what you think. God bless and um, happy painting. I'll see you again very, very soon.